Good morning, everybody. Monday, NASCAR announced the 2023 class for the NASCAR Hall of Fame. We've got a lot of lists, a list of a lot of people, sorry, different drivers, crew chiefs, owners, even presidents. And I'm not talking George Washington. So let's get into that. Let's take a look. Some of these guys have been on this list for a while. Some of these guys and gals have hit the list for the first time now here in 2022 for the 23. So before, before we get started, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit that bell icon so you get notified when I do videos. So first up, we've got Tim Brewer, 30-year crew chief. He went, he run one 53 races as a crew chief including 32 wins and 55 poles in just four years, scoring two championships with Darrell Waltrip and Kelly Arbro. 53 wins total. That's pretty impressive. Next up, we have driver Neil Bonnet. 50, 156 top 10s, 20 poles for 18 victories. He finished out his career in motorsports as a broadcaster. Next nominee, we have a guy who is a little more modern. Someone we see on the TV all the time, and that is Jeff Burton. Today, he's a broadcaster for NBC. Yesterday, he was a driver. He ran much of his career for both, he, almost half of his career for both RCR as well as Roush. Ran for the Cup Series a little before Roush, but he wasn't really a well-known driver until he took over that number 99 car for Roush. Scoring a total of 21 Cup Series wins, 22, sorry, 27 Xfinity wins, 153 top 10s in the Xfinity Series, and 254 top 10s in the Cup Series. He spent nine and a half years with Roush, splitting almost in the middle of the 2004 season going over to RCR where he finished out his racing career, scoring several wins as well as several wins in the Xfinity series. Next up, we have a driver who is a lot more modern. This is a guy who I have a lot of experience watching. I've got a lot of history rooting for, and this is none other than cousin Carl himself, Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards is nominated for the 2023 completely blame brain farted guys don't you just love it the 2023 nascar hall of fame he is best known for being the 2007 nascar xfinity series push series back in the day uh xfinity series champion scoring a total of 72 national series victories including 28 cup series wins for those of you guys who did live through it and you guys who did watch NASCAR at the time, he's best known in 2017 for stepping down from his number 19 ride at Joe Gibbs Racing, where he had many more years before he probably would have been pushed out by Joe or potentially even retired naturally on his own otherwise after a vicious hit in the 2017 NASCAR Championship at Homestead, where he was racing Joey Logano. One of those two was going to be your 2017 NASCAR Cup Series champion. He pushed Joey down to the wall. Joey got into him. He hit the wall, came back up into the track. And he was best known for the ultimate show of sportsmanship. I don't care what sport you're watching. From walk walking from turn one, where his car was, down pit road, climbing up Joey Logano's pit box and shaking all their hands and saying, go win this. Go win it. In fact, I have his last produced win right up top. Next up, we have another driver who is, again, even more modern. None other, none other than Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth ran 18 full-time Cup Series seasons, including the 2003 championship with Roush Fenway Racing. Back then, I believe it was just Roush. <laughs> he is known two Daytona 500s, a Coke 600, all-star winner, Southern 500 winner, 331 top 10s, 
in 697 starts. He had 90, sorry, 39 Cup Series wins, 29 Xfinity Series wins. And one thing he will always be known for is, except for when he joined Chip Ganassi for that, uh, to replace Kyle Larson, he was fairly competitive his entire career. Uh, even even running the six car part time for Roush, he was still fairly competitive. He wasn't out there scoring wins, but he was still out there performing halfway decent for his entire career, full time career, might I add. Next up, we have Harry Gant. Harry Gant is best known for what he did in the Xfinity series. Twenty one Xfinity series wins, but he had eighteen Cup wins. And what he was absolutely best known for, scratch the Xfinity part, was driving the Skull Bandit, number 33. Probably one of the most iconic race cars ever built. He won two Southern 500s, and he had four consecutive victories at 51 years old in 1991. Next up, we have crew chief Harry Hyde, responsible for the 1970 championship over a 26-year career, he had 55 wins. He was a crew chief for drivers like Benny Parsons, Jeff Bodine, Ken Schrader, Rick Hendrick. He actually worked for Rick Hendrick once he became a owner. Bobby Isaac, Buddy Baker, Neil Bonnet, and more. Next up, we have Dr. Joseph Matillo. Or Matilio. I can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. He is the 1968 founder of the 2.5 mile triangle, the tricky triangle in the Pocono Mountains, Pocono Speedway, Raceway. We have Lisa France Kennedy. She is the executive vice chair of NASCAR. She led the NASCAR Rising Project, Phoenix Raceway, and cemented NASCAR to the Midwest building Kansas Speedway. Sam Ard, two-time NASCAR Xfinity Series champion, 22-time winner in only three seasons. In 19, he had 79 top 10s, 92 starts. That's a really, really, really impressive stats. I don't care who you are. If you think it's just the Xfinity Series, back then it was the Bush. Um, but in 92 starts, he had 22 wins, 79 top 10s and 24 poles. He, reti he retired in 1984 after being injured and became a team owner, owning the team Ward Burton, or sorry, Jeff Burton, another nominee, got his first win in 1990 running for his Bush Series race team. Kirk Schellnerdine, best known for being the crew chief of Dale Earnhardt and getting him four championships 1986 1987 1990 and 1991 he scored dale 46 wins 142 top fives and 246 top tens <clears throat> over 26 cup races two truck races and 12 bush series starts he did try to have his own racing career, which is his, which was his dream, starting in 1992, after he full back from RCR. He did score three ARCA Series wins, though, never scoring anything higher than a top 20 in any of NASCAR's top series. For the Daytona 500, he ran an engine used by RC, provided from RCR, simply for promoting. Uh, an RCR uh, logo, and he used tires donated by Dale Earnhardt fans. His team collapsed. He had no money, but he did run until 2007. Just a sparing race here and there. Ricky Rudd, again, another fairly modern driver, second all-time starts at 906. That's the most in the modern era, though which in my opinion is actually a little more impressive because they ran so many fewer races in the modern era. He did get one win 
at least one win in 16 straight seasons. 83 to 98, he won at least one race. One Xfinity and 23 Cup victories. He was the 1977 Rookie of the Year. He ran for Hendrick, Yates, Wood Brothers, and RCR. He also ran between 1994 and 1999. He did score six wins for his own race team, Rudd Performance Motorsports. Larry Phillips. He was a five-time weekly series champion in 1989, 91, 92, 95, and 96. In 1996, you're going to like this one, he scored 14 wins out of his 20 starts. In 1995, he won 32 out of 40 races, beating out Greg Biffle for the championship. He had an estimated 226 wins in 308 starts and 13 track championships in three states. This guy was so good that when they saw his car coming off the trailer, all those other drivers decided to run for second. Next up, we have none other than infamous Mike Helton. Mike Helton is one of the most familiar faces in the NASCAR garage area and in the entire NASCAR community. We all remember that souring day where he stood up and announced the death of Dale Earnhardt. He is the first person outside of the France family to be named NASCAR president. In his five decade long career, he in includes president of NASCAR, as well as operator of Atlanta and Talladega. He cemented NASCAR in a major market such as the United States, Mexico, Canada, and Europe. Next up, we have Alvin Hawkins. He was the flagman that attended the 1947 Streamline Hotel meeting. He was present for many, many, many of NASCAR's firsts, as well as NASCAR decision-making. He, himself, as well as Bill France Sr., established NASCAR racing at Bowman Gray Stadium. Bowman Gray is still run by the Hawkins family today. Janet Guthrie. Janet Guthrie has a lot of firsts, so I think, honestly, she is my vote for, if I had a vote, for the NASCAR Hall of Fame this season. She was the first woman to compete in a Cup Series Super Speedway race. She finished 15th at Talladega. She became the first woman to compete in the Daytona 500 and the Indianapolis 500 in the same year, in 1977. And she scored top five top tens in the NASCAR Cup Series. She was also the first woman to ever lead a lap in the NASCAR Cup Series. She has a lot of other firsts, but those are the big ones that have to do with NASCAR. Next up, we have Ralph Moody. You guys might know that name from the old Holman Moody race team. He does have, personally, five Cup Series wins, but Holman Moody scored 92 Grand National victories, including two championships with with David Pearson. Also scoring, being very notable for scoring the 1965 Daytona 500 with Fred Lorenzen, as well as the 1967 Daytona 500 with none other than Mario Andretti. That race team was a pioneer for a lot of different races. Herschel McGriff. Here's a driver who a lot of you guys might not know. He also might not be I mean, he's probably somebody that most of you guys have never really heard of. Herschel is responsible for four Cup Series wins, 31 top 10s, 86 Winston Wentz. He was the 1986 Winston West champion, but he did score 34 KNN Series West victories between 1954 and 2018. This guy is a legend. In in 2018, this dude ran at 90 years, 4 months, and 21 days. He was the oldest driver to ever start a NASCAR-sanctioned race. Dude's a legend. I mean, come on. Here's another legend. And I, for most of you guys, especially if you're a Tony Stewart fan, you know this name instantly. AJ. Ringing any bells. AJ Foyt. 
128 starts over 30 years in the NASCAR Cup Series. He scored. He raced at least three races per season between 1963 and 1977. He was the 1972 Daytona 500 champion for the Wood Brothers. He did score seven NASCAR Cup Series wins. He's best known, of course, for, for other things, but NASCAR is, is pretty far up there. Seven-time USAC champion, including 67 wins and 117 podiums. And last but not least, we have the Henry Ford of race cars. Edwin Keith Matthews. Most people call him Banjo Matthews. He was a three-time pole winner. He scored 13 top tens, but he stopped racing in 1963 to focus on building cars and being an owner of race cars. He is best known for being the owner of drivers such as Fireball Roberts, A.J. Foyt, Junior Johnson, Donnie Allison, and Kale Yarbrough. Scored nine wins and 14 poles in 1970s and 80s. He built 72% of the winning race cars in the NASCAR Cup Series. Between 74 and 85, they scored 262 wins and three in, in just 362 cup races. That means they, they only lost 100 races, the cars that he built as a, car, as a car builder, becoming one of the most famous car builders in NASCAR history. Thanks for watching, guys. I know a lot of that was long-winded, but we do have a lot of nominees. Who's your vote? Leave it in the comments section below and have a great rest of your day.